a couple of days ago, I looked at the sun and the color was very interesting. Now I make it a habit never to look at the sun directly with my eyes. I took a picture with this camera so that I can show it to you and together we'll investigate. Now, even though it's an interesting color, it's not a good thing. It's particles in the air, and in this case, smoke from wildfires that gives the sun this peculiar color. I'm going to show you two safe ways that we can investigate the color of sunlight and the effects that particles in the air have on it. Now we'll start not looking at the sun, but looking at something that the sun shines on. In the room at home where I record these videos, there's a window, it's right over there. And outside that window, I can see this house. I took this picture just yesterday, some of the smoke had cleared up, the sky was pretty clear, and in the late afternoon, I could see the whiteness of the wall of this house. Later in the afternoon, some of the smoke had blown back in, and also the sun was lower and was slanting down through more of that smoky air, and we can see a big difference in the appearance of that white wall of the house. And then just before sunset, the sky was much darker, the sun was much lower, and the glow of the sunset shining on this house gave it a much different color. Now these three pictures all look fairly normal, but when I put them together, we can see how weird it is that the changing sunlight really makes the color of this house look different. This is afternoon with bright sunshine, late in the afternoon with the sun lower, and then just before sunset. The second way to investigate sunlight is to use a model of the sun, and I'm going to use a light bulb here. This investigation will also show us why the sunlight seems to change at different times of day, especially on a day when the air has a lot of smoke. I'll turn the light on here. We can see that the light from this lamp saturates my computer's camera so that we don't see the light bulb now, just a blob of light. And it's very white light. This light is making white light. Now to investigate white light, I have something called a diffraction grating. I can look through the diffraction grating. Ooh, that's pretty. But I'm going to give you a chance to see it by holding the diffraction grating up to the camera. Ooh, that is pretty. You see a collection of colors, and that collection of colors is called a spectrum. And I happen to see a spectrum on the right side and on the left side of the light bulb. The diffraction grating didn't make those colors. Every color in the spectrum comes from the light itself. Here's a picture of the spectrum that shows the colors of the rainbow from violet to red. Mix them all together, you get white. The, what the diffraction grating does is it unmixes the colors so that we can see them spread out separately. So the light bulb is our model for the sun, and I'll turn it on again. Our model for the atmosphere will be a jar. This is an old cooking oil jar. I took out the cooking oil and put some water in it, and I like it because it has flat sides, but you can do something like this with a glass of water if you don't have a jar with flat sides. I can look through the jar and see the light bulb there, or I could hold the jar up to the camera and you can see the sunlight or the light from the light bulb shining through the jar. But now I'm going to make the water in the jar a little bit cloudy. I've got this liquid, it's milk, and I'll just put a squirt of milk into the water and mix it around. And now the light shining through the jar will be like light shining through smoky air. Let's see how it looks different. Do you notice a change in the color of the light from the light bulb? I'm going to use the diffraction grating to see how the spectrum of the light from the light bulb is changed when I hold the jar in front of it. I still see those collections of color on the right and the left, but the complete rainbow seems to be missing. I see red and orange and yellow, a little green, but the blue and violet is weak. This image represents the spectrum of light after it goes through the milky water or the spectrum of sunlight after it goes through the smoky air. The light looks yellower and the spectrum of the light shows that the purple parts of the light 
are missing. That light was sent in another direction by the particles in a process called scattering. Most of the blue light was scattered away too. A lot of the green light and the red light made it through, and so the resulting light was much yellower. Astronomers call this reddening. Even though it made the light yellow, it shifted the light toward the red end of the spectrum, or at least our appearance of the light. So that's atmospheric reddening of the light. Let's go farther with the reddening by adding more milk to the jar. More particles may scatter more of the blue and purple light. Let's see the effect. I'll turn the light bulb back on and let's observe the light. Ooh, it is much more toward red than it was before. Now the term reddening really makes more sense because the resulting light is really more red when almost all of the purple and blue light is gone from the spectrum, scattered away by the particles in the milky water or the smoke in the atmosphere. A little of the green gets through and almost all of the red gets through. So you can observe the reddening of light on a small scale with milky water. You can see it on a larger scale with sunlight shining through the atmosphere. And if it's smoky, the reddening effect will be even stronger. Astronomers see the reddening effect on a very large scale. These are distant stars, and some of the starlight is blocked by something called a molecular cloud. And around the edge of the molecular cloud, you can see the light from some of these stars comes through. But in the spectrum of those stars, the blue and purple light is scattered away so that the ones at the edge of the cloud look orange or even red. And that's the same effect. Now, some of these stars, like here and here, that's a completely different effect. Those stars really are red. There's a video about why some stars look red, and you can find a link to it in the details below. And although I'm fascinated by the colors and the reddening, I hope that the smoke and the wildfires that cause this smoke are taken care of soon.